I'm Rima el -Ghussain. I have the privilege of working at Netflix. I focus on diversity and inclusion and a lot of our initiatives, especially when it comes to um, being able to do programs like this. So I also am a part of a really great team that's been working to create this opportunity um, where we're really focusing on building a pathway for people of color into our industry. Uh, we are thrilled to talk to you today about our new certificate program that's in partnership with Otis College of Art and Design. It's called ACCESS. ACCESS is an entertainment certificate program for people of color. We combine um, classroom and education certification program. Um, there's networking, mentorship, and apprenticeship. And we really believe that this program is here to help create a pathway into the industry for you. So today we'll be sharing more about the program, the industry, you'll hear some of our journeys into the industry, and we'll be able to answer any questions that you may have. So I'm really excited to be joined today by friends and colleagues who have played a really huge role in making this program possible. So why don't we start first by introducing ourselves? Some of you already got to hear us <laughs> having conversations with each other. So now we're going to be talking to you. So if uh, we can, just please share your name your organization, and one thing you love about the work you do. So Kenny, why don't you start? Hi, everyone. I'm Kenny uh, Grabless, and uh, I'm from the agency Grabless. So. Um, and one thing I love about this industry is that you really get a plethora of experiences. Like, um, it's so amazing to work on such a variety of different content. And um, so the experiences are amazing and quite magical. So you'll get to hear and share soon. Thanks, Kenny. Mark, how about you go? Thank you. My name is Mark Manrose. I'm the Dean of Extension here at Otis College. Um, and one thing I like about you know, my field is just working with all sorts of creative people to, to build and create new educational experiences um, like we're going to talk about today. So it's something I really enjoy doing. I'm very proud of the work that we've uh, put into this and excited to see some of you potentially in the program this fall. Sweet. And last but not least, Noelle. Hi, everybody. I'm Noelle Claro. I work at Netflix. And one thing I love about my work is collaborating with so many different types of partners. I get to work with designers and editors and um, content development folks and strategists and engineers. And that's not even all of them, but um, that's part of why I love being at Netflix. Thanks, Noel. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Kenny, we're going to start with you. So you've been working in this industry for quite some time, not to age you, and you own your own agency. Uh, tell us about your journey. Like, how did you find your passion and how did you turn that into creating a path into your career? Okay. Um, all right. So I started, I actually, I did go to art school. And um, I moved to New York in 1987. So that is kind of showing a little bit of my age. Um, and for the first two years of living in New York, I actually, I think I got, I want to say five, four times it was. Yeah, I think I got five, four times from jobs. Um, and I remember my dad actually saying to me, are you sure you want to do this kind of scenario? And, um, and then it was that moment the light bulb kind of clicked and like I'd gotten, you know, I'd been working at um, a design agencies and it was sort of working on like packaging and different things. And I just wasn't really passionate about it. I wasn't interested in it. And I finally, um, you know, sort of had this moment where I was like, what do I love doing or what am I into? And the two things that came up were music and film. Um, and I literally, I remember going to my CD collection and looking at the back of a CD and seeing like, you know, Columbia or Sony uh, on, ironically, I ended up being getting very lucky. I'm going to this side of the story, but I ended up getting very lucky and I got an opportunity to work at Def Jam Records. And that changed my life, basically. Uh, that was back in 89 and sort of glory days of that company. And yeah, I got to work in the art department at Def Jam working on album covers. And it really did sort of change my life. And I, I worked there for five years it was amazing. Uh, and then I ended up leaving there to go work for MCA Records to continue doing album covers just in a bigger position. But, you know, I got to work with amazing artists like The Roots and Mary J. Blige. You know, I actually designed uh, uh, Notorious Big's album cover Ready to Die. And that's something that even my son was uh, quite impressed by. So <laughs> it's, it's one of my 
favorite things to say, but um, it makes me a little bit cooler. But anyway, so yeah, I got a chance to work on all these amazing album covers and it was just like, I don't know, it was a world that I didn't know existed, basically. I didn't know, oh, you could make an album cover and, you know, that like you could be part of making an album cover, you could be part of a photo shoot. I didn't know any of this stuff existed. So for the for that 10 years, I got a chance to work with so many different people and so many different artists. And yeah, it was kind of a dream. Like, you know, I remember going on tour with The Roots, you know, um, and just being able to be on tour with them and shoot photography, all these things, like all, the, all this whole world, like just, you know, was something that I just never knew existed. So it sort of changed my life and changed, changed me forever, it changed my professional career. Um, and it was something that I didn't know when I left art school. I didn't know there was a chance to get into album covers. Like I didn't know that was a thing. Um, so in 2000, we actually, myself and my partner started Gravelist, which is our agency. And at the time, all we did was music. Um, and then maybe like three or four years in, uh, you know, that passion again started to like boil up and we were like, what else can we do? And that's when we went into working on film and TV. And that was a, a whole transition. We had, we thought actually it was going to be easier. We thought, well, you know, we do all this cool album cover work. We're going to be able to just sort of jump into TV film. And it wasn't the case. Um, it was a completely different industry. But, you know, we did make our way and we started working on more and more TV film campaigns. And yeah, from there, it's just been, um, we've, we've been very fortunate. We get to work on some amazing projects. Um, and yeah, that's how it really started, you know? Yeah, thanks for sharing your story. It's, I love like hearing like, you said you were getting fired multiple times, right? But it wasn't uh -huh. something you enjoyed doing, right? How many times? Four. <laughs> yeah, four. I, I wasn't trying to call that number out, but you know, <laughs> you're open to it. Um, and sometimes it's like, you think there's something wrong with you, but maybe it's just like, you're not in that right path. Yeah, right? And it's just, and passion's such a huge thing, I think too. It's like, you know, when you get passionate about things, um it makes a difference you know your attitude makes a difference like what you're into how much you want to learn how much you want to be somewhere makes a difference so I think it's you know passion is a huge part of it too yeah I was quick follow-up question did you always when did you know like you were creative when did that yeah I mean you know it's interesting about that so when I, I grew up in England and um when you left school in England the big job that you for some reason it was a guaranteed job you could work in a bank I do not know why but that was sort of the job that sort of you could totally walk into. And I didn't, I didn't want to do that. And I went to a cousin's workplace and he was working on magazine design. And what was really great about that was just, I just loved the energy of a studio. I just, and I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know about art or anything else. I just loved the energy. I knew this wasn't a bank. So mm -hmm. then I started getting more into art. And then from art, from being in high school, I just, you know, the whole, the art thing just became like a real thing. And I think one of the things about art, it doesn't necessarily always translate into like, oh, there's a job there, you know, but all I knew is I didn't want to work in a bank at the time. So that's, that's where it sort of came up. Or sometimes we don't even know that art can turn into a job. Yeah, right? no, absolutely. And that's why what we're talking about here, which is awesome. Um, but good to know you're from England. That's not your New York accent. That makes no, sense. Yeah, no, I, no, I still have it, you know, I'm from <laughs> I'm from East London, so when I came to America, it actually was much stronger. So it's, yeah. it's a little bit, it's a little bit down. Now. Gotcha, gotcha. Good. Yeah. All good. Thank you for sharing. And um, one more question: You've been part of this since day one, as sure. even before I even started working at Netflix, really bringing this idea to life. Like, why well, did you? Why did you feel like creating this program is so important? So I'll tell you. So we've we've had our agency now for like twenty, coming up twenty three years. We've had the agency, and. Quite frankly, I can count on both hands how many kids of color have walked through my doors to be an intern even at our agency. So that's a problem. You know, it's sort of like, um, and in general, there, there's not a lot of people of color sort of in the industry in general. And when you think about it, there's a, there's a lot more content being made by people of color. So the reality is for me, it just seems to make sense that regards to marketing that content, then it, it, that needs to travel. It needs to also rep be represented there. And um, a uh, actually a competitor uh, agency uh, partner reached out to me in 2020 
and was asking like, hey, what do you think we should do? And we both agreed that education is just, it's huge. It's a huge part of it. What you don't know, you don't know. And that sort of was the birth of this because we were like, well, you know, we need to create something where there's access to this industry, hence the name. Um, and we need to create something that makes sense. And we need to create something that will actually help people succeed in the industry. And I mean, that's gonna be like, for me, the biggest part of this program is that it has been designed and fashioned to actually, it isn't just like, and this is no disrespect to any degree, but it isn't like, oh, an art, just an, it's like, oh, we're just make, get, trying to have an art degree. This is very specific to our industry and knowing our industry and being prepared for it, which I think is, is huge. And, I, and that's what makes me excited, the fact that we've gotten to this place where this is now a reality, thanks to Otis and the Netflix crew. Yeah, I mean, you make a really great point. There's a lot of times when we think of Hollywood and what we see even on Netflix, we just think of like the people that we see right in front of us on the screen, right? But there's so much that goes into all of the work that we do. And those opportunities are not really always uh, visible to everyone. Not everyone knows that they're, you can love drawing and be part of this world, right? Oh you, can, you can love um, like videos and editing and doing things behind the scenes and really be part of the work that we do. So let's talk about that a little bit if we're cool. Um, Noelle, talk to me a little bit about um, the opportunities with access. Um, like what roles are we talking about and, and what do they actually mean in our industry? So the way that we're breaking it down, we're concentrating on um, three tracks within the program. That's design, illustration, and editing. And then within those broad categories, there are, there are tons of options. So um, designers in the industry work on movie posters, um, show logos, and, and motion graphics, which is how we apply movement to, to type. Um, illustrators can also work on movie posters alongside designers by sketching out concepts or uh, drawing hand-drawn logos um, or stylized images of talent. And another option for illustrators to pursue is storyboarding um, for long form and short form content. And then the editing track is uh, where we'll train students to work on trailers, like you mentioned, uh, Rima. And um, that's for uh, shows and movies. And then posts for social media also falls under that editing track. And that's also like all of these, these tracks are sort of gateways into other industry jobs like producing. Um, if you study editing, that's a really great gateway into producing and project management and production management. Um, under design, you can also pursue a whole bunch of other uh, design related careers. Um, there is motion graphic designer um, and motion graphic animator. Um, I'm sort of listing off a whole bunch of things and I'm hoping during our Q&A, people ask questions about really specific things if I am going too quickly or mentioning things that you all don't know about. But as Rima mentioned also, everybody knows what actors do, they know what directors do, but there are a whole bunch of behind the scene jobs that we all do. Um, that's what we're doing, Kenny and I in the industry um, have sort of cut our teeth on doing creative stuff. And Kenny, you mentioned that it was hard to move from music to TV, which is really interesting because I went from magazines to TV and they're all part of the creative industry, but they all require different kinds of skills. So entertainment marketing is very specific and uh, we wanna give everybody access into this industry and uh, the program will give everybody a sort of a peek behind the curtain and help them figure out what, what their passion is and help develop that. Anything you wanted to add to that, Kenny, just about the roles? Yeah, I think that um, it's, you know, one of the things that is so exciting about this is that you're going to, in this program, you're going to be hearing not just some instructors, but you're also going to be hearing from people that do this every day. You know, it's like you're going to be hearing, there's going to be mentors, there's going to be people from the industry that come in and talk to you and speak to you about what's going on. So it's, you're really going to um, get a real authentic understanding of what we do and one of the biggest things for me was that it was so important that the people that went through this program was prepared 
to get into our industry. Because it, it's not just enough just to get into the industry, but we need you to actually do well and thrive in it. And that, that's what I think the, the program is going to do. I think it's really going to help people thrive and really understand the industry almost before they enter it, which I think is going to be, you know, so fruitful. So, so. true. Um, a lot of intention went into making this program. Um, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about it? What, what is a certificate program? How long is it? And how is it structured? Absolutely. Uh, a certificate program is really an interesting opportunity because what it is, is, it's a specialized, tailored educational experience with a specific goal of getting people a job, advancing in their careers, breaking into a new industry, et cetera. It's not education for education's sake, it's education and training with a specific goal of landing a job, advancing in your career, et cetera. And these programs are very purposefully put together to put people in a position to succeed along those lines. So this specific one is 20 months long, 14 months uh, full-time student work, um, and then six months of a full-time internship um, at an agency partner, working day in, day out to really understand, again, hone your skills, build a network, et cetera. Um, it's the educational, um, the educational experience tied with the work experience that really brings the entire program together uh, again, to set you up for success in this industry. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we have the certificate program, and then we have a huge component of it that is the apprenticeship as well, too. Um, and so it's no question that Creating Access like really got us thinking about how to build a program that intentionally provides a direct pathway. And we need to be able to match that certificate program with an apprenticeship opportunity to really get that hands-on learning experience. So Noel, talk to me about um, why the apprenticeship is so important and also like, why does it matter so much if you're trying to break into the industry? So the apprenticeship program is the, the last leg of the program and it offers students a paid internship at an LA agency. And that's gonna expose them to real world projects. And it's also going to support the curriculum that they've been engaged in up to that point. Um, and so it's the last leg of the access program, and they'll actually get to apply everything they've learned, technique, um, creative concepting, collaboration skills to things like designing movie posters, uh, trailer editing, and creating social media content. Then along with that, as part of the apprenticeship, they'll be engaged in events that are built to um, keep them connected to each other and to industry folks. So there's going to be networking mixers, um, learning labs, agency immersion days, and a final project. And all of that stuff is leading up to building this network of um, professionals that they're going to use as their foundation to break into the industry. And as the, um, can I just go right into networking, please, Rima, because it sort of connects into the apprenticeship. Um, so the the networking is one of the key components of the program, and it's it's really going to start uh, day one as students are exposed to Otis faculty. That's the first level of networking. Those are going to be practicing professionals that are teaching them, but also connecting with them and mentoring them. And then that's going to expand throughout the, the, uh, the time of the program with guest speakers. Um, they're gonna be paired with mentors and then uh, the apprenticeship in the agency. So all of those opportunities are really crucial to the student success. And um, it's actually, as they, they gain the knowledge that they're learning within the program and confidence, networking will become much more easy, much more natural to them and it'll be much more organic. And, that's actually our ultimate goal is to have this connection among everyone that's in the program. So mentors can keep in touch with mentees. Mentees can then also pay it forward to other people in the industry once they break in. And um, it's a big old networking party. And I think that Kenny mentioned that um, you know, guest speakers are really important because they're going to be people within the industry that are coming to either spend an hour a day or maybe a whole semester with our students. And that connection isn't going to end there. Once you're connected with people, it's going to hold, it's going to stick. And um, I think that's sort of the key 
to really supporting people throughout their journey in school and then helping them find work when they get out of school. Thanks for sharing that. So I'm going to recap. So like for, let's walk through this, right? We're building this program, lots of intention. We're like, what's the special sauce to really get, create a direct pathway into the industry? While like there's not no uh, huge checklist that just works every single time, we do know, right, that like learning and education, right, turning that passion into a craft and really saying like, you could say, I love drawing. And what does that mean? How do we turn that into becoming a designer? So a certificate program um, with Otis, right? And that is fully funded, correct, Mark? <laughs> Netflix. I can point you. that out. Uh, and how long is the pro the certificate program portion? It's 20 months, two zero, 20 months. Okay. And then once we complete the certificate program, which is filled with another part of the special sauce, networking opportunities, getting to be connected and visit agencies to really to see what like day in the life is, um, getting to build a network and connection with industry, um, industry leaders to be able to really build relationships for your entire career, um, but also to be able to learn and get mentorship, right? Mentorship is a huge part of our program, correct? And so that's all going on during the certificate program. And then in addition to that, you'll then have a paid six month apprenticeship at an agency, right? Uh, we're all good so far. And in that you'll still be getting mentorship. You'll still be able to build your network, um, working on building your portfolio, and then have a final project where we can continue to apply the, the learnings to practice and really start building things. Um, am I missing anything? I mean, and so much more, but- So much more. One thing I will say is yes. that once gone through that whole process, the, the point of it, by the end of that, by the end of that six months, is that hopefully um, that'll be your indoctrination into the industry. And that will lead to employment in the industry. Our goal is to, um, you know, change the way the industry looks. And this is the first step in doing that. Um, and, you know, that's why it's so imperative that this is a success. And it's so imperative that um, you, you have the right support to succeed. And that is the one thing I can say that Otis and Netflix have, you know, been absolutely amazing about is providing the support for you the student to actually succeed in this program so i just want to push yeah. that yeah sure. that, that is our intention i appreciate that so it's like can i add one thing rima the the uh, part of that support also is um it is a full scholarship but it's also um all equipment hardware and software is covered under that scholarship so the support is there financially as well yeah so we're talking about a, a full scholarship for your for your education and um, for, for any of the um, software and computer needs that you have, right? So we're going to be equipping you and preparing you to be able to have that because there are definitely softwares that you'll be able to need to be able to really be able to work on your projects and really study the program. So that's there. In addition to that, creating space for you to get to know and connect with the industry, mentorship, apprenticeship. Um, there's also opportunities that we're going to be sharing with you, like not just about how to be great at your craft, but also help guide you along the way. So talking about like resume building, um, interviewing, things like that are going to be also there for you as a resource so that we can really help guide you on the journey. So Mark, um, who qualifies to be able to participate? People that are interested. It's, it's open and eligible to people of 18 years of age or older, people of color. Um, who typically lacked access, and like Kenny was very eloquently saying, just um, the representation in this industry. But we're really looking for just dedicated creatives, regardless of your background experience. We encourage people to apply because um, this really is geared towards, this is not like, oh, you need really intensive art and design background to do this. That would kind of defeat the purpose, I feel. Part of what we're doing here is making sure that there is access to people from to, who want to choose and pursue um this endeavor to be able to do so and have the skills um you know necessary to be able to succeed but we're casting a wide net of individuals um uh, just that go along the lines of what kenny was saying um with what we're looking for to how to change the industry like you know like we've been covering yep. all right so person of color 18 or older um 
high school or equivalent, right? So you could have your GED, you just completed high school, um, any age, right? So, and no previous experience needed. All accurate? Correct. Cool. And um, we mentioned, like I said, the cost and is fully funded um, in our partnership together. Um, and so, Mark, if I wanted to apply, where do I go? Otis.edu slash Netflix. That's where all the information is. Again, there's more detailed information about the program, specific classes, um, outcomes, et cetera. Um, and also the steps you need to apply and our email, our phone number, et cetera. So we can, if you have any questions about the process at all, we can demystify that for you completely and make sure that you have um, what you need to put your application on the best foot forward. But otis.edu slash Netflix. One, one, thing, one thing I would like to say um, is that, you know, again, there, there has been so much work put forth for this program. Um, and, you know, one thing, and I'll, I'll go back to my initial story, that is definitely going to be needed is passion. And that, that's one thing I just want to put that up front and say, like, the passion to uh, be creative and to learn and to grow is what we're going to need in regards to the people that are applying for this uh, program, because it really, like I said, it really is setting you up to win. And we want to make sure that everyone that applies understands that we do still need that passion. We still need that drive. Um, and it's it's gonna be work. We wanna make sure that people realize that too, um, but it's gonna be so worth it. And I remember, I will say a quick little story. I remember being on a photo shoot and um, I was with Dr. Dre and I was showing him sketches. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, I cannot rap. I can't make beats, but here I am sitting with Dr. Dre showing him these sketches that we're about to take these photos of him. And I'm like, I know that people don't realize that this isn't even an option. So that's all about to change. So I just wanted to say that. I appreciate that. So you don't need to know every job in the industry. We'll guide you there. You don't even know how need to know how to do it all. You don't need to know, um, you know, you don't need to know anyone in it. You just, right. What we're asking for is your passion, and your dedication right. and we'll fill in the blanks that's what i'm hearing is that right kenny no we're gonna give you the access that's what yep. we need and we'll provide the access and, and can i add something too in addition to the access what we're going to provide you with are mentors and supporters that will help you figure stuff out because you don't know the industry and so all the people that are involved with this program are going to help guide you through um and change your passion into a craft as Rima mentioned, but make sure that you understand what the opportunities are. Make sure you understand um, that you are supported and that you have people at Otis and at Netflix who want you to succeed and really wanna channel your passion into something that turns into a career. Absolutely. Appreciate it. I'll say one final question before we go into our Q and A and I'm gonna ask all of you this. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten from a mentor? Mark, I'll ask you to go first. Sure. Um, actually, my mentor was uh, the person who got me into this field in education. When you work in education, I didn't know that you could build and develop programs along these lines. Um, I didn't know that was a thing at all. Um, and so the best piece, a piece of advice I ever got from a mentor was just to um, keep your eyes open for how to build and create new things. Um, because if you aren't looking for opportunities with which to do that, they're not just going to fall in your lap. So if that's what you want to do and that's like what interests you, you got to go out and find it because um, these opportunities are rare, but they're there, um, you know, if you're looking for them and, you know, always pushing, et cetera. So I always, I always took that to heart, um, you know, through my career. Thanks, Mark. Noel. Um, my favorite mentor gave me two bits of advice. One was never burn bridges because you don't know who you will come across. And I am here to tell you, since I've been in the industry for a long time, you do meet back up with people. Um, and then always be curious because curiosity is the, the dreamiest, uh, it, it leads to inspiration. It leads to development. It leads to, um, discoveries. So always be curious. 
Penny. So mine was a creative mentor. Um, and ironically, I was trying to get a job. Um, it was, I was trying to get a job at Sony Music. And he looked at me and he said, um, I don't see, and I hadn't done any album covers before, but he looked at the work and he said, I don't see your voice in any of the work. He's like, I want to see your voice. So he's like, don't lose that no matter what. So I really feel that was like some of the best advice because it's so easy to, to feel like you don't belong, you don't understand, you're not part of something um, and your voice is not important, but I think your voice is important. And I think this program for me specifically is about hearing other voices and new voices and bringing that to our industry, so. Thank you all. Are you all ready for some Q&A? Word up. Okay. Uh, Mark, this I think one's for you. Um, there's a question about being 18. And so it says some, some seniors will not be 18 until the end of the year, but will have graduated high school by July 1, 2023. That's okay, right? Yeah, we're mainly, we would like all the students to be 18 by September 1st, 2023. But if there are exceptions, please reach out to our office. We are happy to work with people on an individual basis to see timing and, you know, where things line up. But um, we are looking to get, have all the students be 18 years of age by September 1st, 2023. Awesome. Also, if you have questions, please fill them out in the, um, in the time and we will definitely work to get through them. Another question is for interested students who live out of state, is this program an option? If so, are there resources for relocation? The program is an option for anyone who's able to be in Los Angeles for the, for the length of it. So regardless of where you're coming from, if you're able to be in Los Angeles, that's wonderful. We would love to have you in the program. This is not just for people in Southern California, um, but and I can let you know, Kenny and Noel and Rima speak to this, um, it's important to be here in LA when this is going on for building your network. And this is where the industry takes place. It's all over the place, you know, you know, don't get me wrong, but it's very important to have a physical presence in LA. So this program is very specifically designed to be an in-person experience with an in-person internship. But um, if you are able to be in LA, regardless of your background or where you're coming from along those lines, we would love to have you in the program. I would certainly encourage you to apply. And if you have any, again, specific questions about a specific situation, please contact our office and we'll set up an, you know, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to see what we can do to what we can help, what would work in your, uh, with your particular situation, et cetera. Thanks, Mark. Mark, I'm gonna put this to you too. When does the program start? When does the program start? Mid-September 2023. So basically like the Monday after this upcoming Labor Day, I believe it's September 11th. Um, but that would be the first day of classes. We're going to have some work um, in the lead up to that that can be corresponded with via email, Zoom, et cetera, like some pre-reading and pre-assignments, pre you know, just to kind of lay the groundwork. An opening ceremony, late August, early September, et cetera. There will be some things like that, but the first class in and of itself will be 9 a.m. on that Monday after Labor Day, this upcoming September, 2023. Thank you. Um, Noel, question is, I have no prior experience in drawing. However, I'm interested in pursuing a career in editing. Am I eligible to apply for this course despite my lack of drawing skills? Um, absolutely. You don't need drawing skills to apply. The application is set up with a whole bunch of creative prompts that will help us get to know you, what you're like. Um, and there are two uh, project-based prompts that you can use to show us how you think, how you think creatively. Drawing is not part of it. You will learn some drawing in the program because the first semester is um, 101 classes in illustration design and editing. So there will be some drawing instruction you definitely don't need it to apply. Same for the design track? Yeah, for I, I would say we don't expect you to have experience when you're applying to the program. We expect you to have passion, like Kenny said, and the desire to learn about the industry and become aware of what the possibilities are. And from there, we'll help shape you into a creative, but you don't need to 
show us that you can design or draw or edit, even though I'm sure many of you can edit because you do it all the time on TikTok. So you have editing skills built in. There's a couple application questions that I think you, Noel, could definitely help answer. First one is on the website, it says there's a creative brief in the application process. Do you mind talking about this in more detail? And Sure. Um, a creative brief is something that we write when we're assigning a project to someone. And the reason we included that in the application is to give you a little bit of a taste of a real world assignment. So creative brief includes inspiration and motivation and references about the project. It also includes the creative goal. And the project we're having you do for the application is writing a creative brief um, based on the, the prompts that we included. So we're looking to see how you would approach that and how you think creatively. I hope that answers the question. If, if not, please expand on it. Follow up. <laughs> and can you talk a little bit about the video portion of the application and any tips on what to submit? Yep, we are looking for um, basically a self-portrait of, of you. Um, and we wanna learn about your moment of culture. When did you realize that you had a passion for making something? Um, was it something you saw? Was it someone that inspired you? Was it a, a song you heard? Um, we want you to take that and, and explain that to us in a video. And you don't have to use super fancy editing techniques. You don't have to have um, an amazing lighting kit or anything like that. We just want to see how creative you can get. And we want to learn more about you. Awesome. Hey, Mark, can an international student apply to this program? Absolutely. But it's also just the same thing. You have to be able to be in Los Angeles um, for that 20 month period, basically September 2023 through May of 2025. But regardless of where you're coming from, as long as you're in Los Angeles and able to attend class every day and uh, work at your internship full time during that six month period at the end, um, we would love to have you in the program. We would certainly encourage you to apply. Uh, awesome. Um, and let's talk about the certif for certification program. Um, how will it be measured? Is it a, a you have, the question is, is this a course you'd have to pass from a grade? Well, it's a non-credit program, which is important. This is not something that you would be able to take this class and transfer it to, oh, now I want to go to UCLA or local college, wherever. Um, but it's just training you to, again, to get a job in the industry, not to to move you along towards a, like, um, like a bachelor's degree or something to that effect. Now, the courses, the classes will be graded. There's absolutely going to be... Um, projects and assignments and we have to gauge who's who's assessing what what learning is being assessed and what's happening etc um but the class is more based on competencies and and um it's less about getting a gpa and a grade and more about displaying core competencies and skills and what you'll need to survive in the industry and in the workplace and that's what how, that's how the coursework is set up and geared towards so it's not about doing this oh look at this gpa it's about doing this program and then pointing to and knowing that you now have these skills to succeed in your first in your internship and then secondly and most importantly um out in the um when you're working in the field I, it, it, I hope that answers that question okay and whether you're a um a u.s citizen international student tuition is free for the certificate program correct mark correct gotcha Noel, does the video submission have to be live or show my face? In other words, can I animate something? Yeah, it doesn't have to be live action. It could be animated, it could be stop motion. Um, it could be a combo. It, it really can be anything you want that shows us, uh, that tells us about you. And if that, if you wanna express yourself through, um, it could be any medium. That's what I'm saying in a lot of words. Sorry. So it can be animated. Definitely. Got it. It, it can also be, can I just add one more thing? It can be uh, like a compilation of clips of other things too. Um, we, we want you to be creative. So don't, 
don't think inside the box, think outside the box and try and solve it in a way that will make us just say, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. Thanks, Noel. Um, if anyone wants to see a breakdown of what this scholarship provides and supports, where can they find that, Mark? Otis.edu slash Netflix. And again, all sorts of specific information, a much more deep dive um, on any particulars around the program and our contact information is there for any follow-up information you would need. We'd be happy to set up individual consultations with anybody who wants to know more about their specific situation or just general questions about the application process, et cetera. Thanks, Mark. I see, because I'm seeing definitely a lot of questions about the scholarship, a lot for international students. So again, if you do have some of those questions very specific, um, you feel like we haven't answered them, Mark, where can they go to reach out? Well, they can, well, there's an email address that is listed on our website, otis.edu slash Netflix, but also um, there's a um, an email address, it's called access.cert, C-E-R-T, um, at otis.edu, that is listed on the website as well. Um, any questions, um, inquiries to that email are specifically about this program. So again, if there's any like, who does this go to? I, but I got, I got this one random question. You can send that into that email address um, and, the, and you will get a response from our, um, from our team. Awesome. One question says, which agencies will be taking in students for the apprenticeship portion of the program, assuming this means the apprenticeship is not going to be at Netflix? I can definitely answer for that. The, that is correct. The apprenticeship will not be at Netflix. It will be with one of our participating partner agencies. So you, you know, our, um, we'll be working in partnership with our agency partners. They'll be providing the apprenticeship opportunity and you'll still be really closely connected to a lot of the work that we're doing at Netflix. We will be able to share a list with you as we get closer into the start of the, um, I guess September, the start of the certificate program. So more information on that to come. Keep these questions coming. Someone asked, um, I want to learn script writing and video edi editing. Do you think I have a chance to get these courses? Who feels comfortable answering that question? I can take that. Um, there, there will be video editing, quite a bit of it. That will be, that's one of the concentrations. Script writing might be addressed in certain projects, but it's not a track we're offering, but it might be covered um, in some of the curriculum. Awesome, thanks. Um, I'll just do some follow-up questions. So if I am in the designer track, what are some of the courses I would be learning? Noel, that was for you, sorry. Yep, I was gonna, I was waiting. I thought Kenny might wanna take that one, but I am totally here for that. Um, you're gonna be learning um, graphic design. You're gonna be learning typography. You're gonna be learning, um, there's a class about key art, which is what we call posters for movies and films. Um, you're gonna learn all about the production of key art and the design of it, how to concept and come up with ideas for a poster based on a creative brief, like I mentioned earlier. And you're also going to learn uh, about social media posts, designing those. And um, I think that covers it for design. Okay. Kenny, Kenny, you are comfortable talking about any of the other tracks? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, one of the, in regards to even the, the movie post, the design track, it's like, there's, there's two parts to this, right? There's the, obviously knowing the skills, learning the skills, but also the thinking. And that's going to be a big part of it as well. It's just like, how do you think about projects? You know, and that's, I, I mean, that's going to be um, just really helpful in telling and help growing uh, you just and getting you used to this industry and then getting you used to the idea of like why things don't work and like you know what is marketing's spin on this and it's like you're, you're going to get like that kind of feedback and I think like those are like more sort of real world um, learnings that you're going to learn that you know maybe normally in, in this in in most sort of art situations art uh, schools you, you don't get this type of feedback so I think that this our feedback is going to be very specific to our industry and how our industry speaks to you. So I think that that's really important as well. Yeah, 
So like you're going to be learning skills, but you're also going to be doing some critical thinking, really right. understanding like how teams are built and when what each role you play and how things go, right? Like what is a brief and what and what do we do with that and and what role do you play? Is, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, what what ideas are working, what ideas aren't working, um, you know, critiques, you know, all these things are like super important to all, all the elements of it. Day to day. Yeah. And, and then to piggyback off what Kenny's saying, also learning how to work collaboratively and working on teams. Um, and, you know, maybe someone's going to give some creative direction and then someone's going to execute it. And then everyone's going to talk about um, how and why that worked. Um, or uh, there's also history of marketing. And that's something that, um, uh, you know, marketing goes way back in history, but we're doing history of recent entertainment marketing. And within there, you're going to study a lot of design tropes and um, design trends. So there's that's also going to touch on the design track. Awesome. Question says, can you combine the design and editing tracks? I'm an emerging writer slash director who is also really interested in creative directing. Mark, I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to say Short answer, no, but long answer, I think you're gonna be exposed to a number of different things and different people in these programs where I think you would, we would focus on one track, but you'd be exposed to, again, with beyond, beyond the specific class you're in, like we're talking about the mentorships, the guest speakers, these other elements, I think we're exposed you to other, again, other facets of this industry, because um, we do need to keep people on um, one of the tracks, but it doesn't mean you're in a silo, you're not exposed to anything else where other people are learning, et cetera. So you would be in one specific track, but you also throughout this, the nature of the setup of the program, um, be um, exposed to a number of different things outside of your specific track. Gotcha. And can I add to that also, Rima, because we do have some electives. So within your major, your specific track, you're gonna study on your concentration, but then you have the option to take a few electives. So you can do a little bit of combining. Yeah. Mark, let's talk about the time commitment, like with the class frequency per week. What it, What is the certificate program? Um, what's the commitment required? It's Monday through Friday, nine through five. That's essentially the uh, the structure of the program. There will be other events um, um, at, at nights, um, weekends. I mean, these are optional, but honestly, there's, there's going to be such great opportunities. You're going to want to do them. Um, but the classroom instruction itself and the internship are geared around nine to five, Monday through Friday, full time. Um, we are off for holidays, the normal college breaks, you know, et cetera. Um, it's not literally every single Monday through Friday throughout the calendar year, um, but it is definitely geared towards 20 months, Monday through Friday, this is what you're doing, um, either in Otis or at your apprenticeship. And then there will be, you know, um, obligations outside of that time just to help you be as successful as possible. But the, the core of the program is geared towards a Monday through Friday, nine to five experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then within that 20 months, talk to me about, are there holidays, breaks, time Absolutely. off? Yeah, okay. all the normal breaks, um, you know, normal holidays. There, Otis College itself shuts down for the last two weeks of the year. So we'll finish up one term in probably early December-ish, maybe it's December 10th, 12th, that sort of thing. Then we'll pick back up in January. So there's a natural break there. The academic portion of the program is broken up into four terms. Between those terms, we take a, a week or two off to give people a breather and a reset. And also if there needs to be missed class, you know, there, there, there's some, uh, some times and gaps built in strategically. Um, so you're not just going total burnout style, 52 plus weeks, five days a week. Um, it's important to go hard and then also be able to take a breath, take a break from it before you re-up for the next round of classes, re-up for your next project, whatever you're working on, et cetera. Okay. One, one thing I want to say on that too is like, it was very specific, you know, we talked about it earlier in terms of it being a Monday to Friday full on full-time course. And we felt it was really important because we, we, that level of commitment is actually what is needed to really survive in our industry. So that was another reason, like, I feel like everything in this course is really tailored to get you to that place where you will start being used to a workflow and how much work that you're doing and like the schedule of the work that you're doing and so that you are better prepared for actually getting into the industry. So I wanted to say that. Yeah, it, so essentially it's a full-time commitment. 100%. And it's very intentional in why we did that. But 
that is a great question. I'm asking what that commitment is. Uh, what is the last deadline, the deadline to apply for this? March 31st, that's when we are closing out the application window. So that is the deadline. If you are in a scenario where for whatever reason, that's gonna be a problem and you need a few extra days or whatever, I please just recommend that you contact our office and we'll see what we can do. But um, in the sake of fairness to everyone, we are looking to uh, um, close the application window on March 31st and then notify um, the selected applicants one way or the other um, by the end of that, by the end of that next month. So by the end of April, um, people should be notified slash the first week of May is when we'll be notifying people when you've been accepted or you're standing with the program one way or the other. So you can make those plans accordingly. Yeah, that question just came in too. So we'll say beginning okay. of May, early May, you should know, right? Yeah. Um, animation and visual effects, are they included in this program? There's some basic animation. Visual effects will not be included. Gotcha. And um, let's say, are there more advanced courses for people with experience in these areas? No, no but we, with the nature of education like this, is that if there, and why it's geared for people with no experience, is that you can have a, a, um, a wide range of experience um, with any specific subject matter that you happen to be in. And the curriculum is geared towards that. And you're only going to benefit by being around people with either more or less um, than you, wherever you happen to be in the spectrum of whatever um, subject matter is being taught in the moment. But being exposed to that range of, of uh, learners is something that we handle basically all the time. And our education is geared toward to accommodate that. And, um, Basically, it helps, it helps all students to be able to surround themselves with their peers, regardless of, the, uh, of their specific expertise with any particular subject matter. Um, but the curriculum is designed and geared to accommodate for everybody, assuming, and what we're looking for is, like Noelle mentioned, just a high level of creativity and drive and commitment. If you have that, then you're going to be fine, even if the person next to you happens to have a lot of experience and say key art, and maybe you don't. Well, the purpose at the end of that class is to get everybody the skills that they're going to need relative to where they are to, you know, be in a position to succeed in that specific area. Yeah, um, I, honest concern here is it's any uh, insight we want to share is this given the that this program was designed to increase access right and it's a full time commitment there is a concern about balancing a work schedule on top of classes. And I think that's a really fair concern. Um, the, this uh, question is for just asking for any insight on that. I think we can probably give you maybe a little bit, but I think this is might be something where if you want to talk a little bit deeper, it may be good to talk about this outside of this call, I think, to be able to provide support. But if anybody has anything they want to share right now to be able to provide insight, please do so. But if not, I would say this might be something where it could, could be good to reach out, um, like Mark mentioned, on the Otis website, and we can, it might be better to have like a little deeper conversation to be able to support you. Any any initial thoughts? I don't want to. I would just say, to, to echo what Rima said, please contact our office, because I think it'd be great to have, like a, again, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with time commitments and where you need to be and when, et cetera, with any particular individual out there. Um, that's, again, that's a normal thing that we do here and we're happy to have those conversations. I think that's an important part of understanding what the commitment would be. Um, but, and so with that, this program is geared towards people, again, for adults. So we definitely understand that adults have adult responsibilities. So when you're working with adult learners, there is a, there is a give, there is a flow to accommodating individuals' work schedules, et cetera. So none of that would be outside of the norm. But as Kenny was saying, this, this industry, it takes a high level of commitment and drive and you need to be committed to this. And I think that's the key. And if you're committed to this is where we wanna be, we can figure out the particulars with regards to work schedules, et cetera. I'm not saying that we can solve all the problems and we're gonna make, make it all perfect for everyone, but this is not a, we expect everybody to be in class Monday through Friday, nine through five, and then also have like 10 hours of homework a night and be completely monopolized. We, um, we are very used to building and working with um, an adult learner population, again, to give them the skills that they need to advance in their career, et cetera. Any particulars, though, beyond that? Okay, that's great, Mark, but my specific situation entails X, Y, Z. 
I think that would be a great thing to contact our office and you speak with our uh, Pace Guard program team around this. And we can let you know really specifically um, the time commitment, how this may impact you one way or the other. And then you as an individual can make the best determination for you know what's best for your life, career goals, et cetera. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Um, it says, can you take other Otis classes outside of this program? Sure, absolutely. absolutely. More, more the merrier, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it, that speaks to the, the work thing as well. If there, are, there are going to be responsibilities outside of your life beyond this class, I'm sorry, beyond this program. If you choose it to be, or not choose it with this work, you choose it to take a class, it's be whatever, that's fine. We have to accommodate that. We're going to understand that. But um, you're in a group of dedicated adult learners. And so that's where people are going to be. But again, say but, 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 but um, this, this is how our curriculum through extension and really this whole field is geared towards working with working adults and people with other responsibilities and having and um, delivering and developing a curriculum that is going to meet their needs while also meeting the realities of people's lives. I guess just for clarity, for my sake too, right? I'm in, I'm in this certificate program, right? Access. And that is fully funded, right? So, uh, uh, program. But I want to take a, a another course at Otis that's not part of the certificate program. Can I, I'm hearing yes. Is this, is it funded through this program though? Or would they have to pay an additional, you know, is that a separate thing that they have to do on their own? Yeah, that would be a separate thing that you would do on. Just wanted to make clear expectations. Thank you, Mark. Um, Noel, talk to me a little bit about the final project. Um, so the final project will be a, a campaign like project that the students are working on in teams and it'll be led by um, a mentor um, or a group of mentors. And it'll be pitched to a whole bunch of um, industry professionals and they'll have, the students will get feedback from the industry professionals um, and exposure. Again, it's all about exposure, building the network. And it's something that's gonna happen during the apprenticeship and it wraps up at the end of, of the apprenticeship period. Awesome. Kenny, I'm, I wanna take the editing track. What will I be learning and what job opportunities are there for me afterwards? Okay, so that's interesting. So we at Gravelist do mostly uh, print, but even on the editing track, one thing I do know, and Nora, uh, and I think, you know, it's it's one of those things where this, the job, when you go, and please correct me guys, Noel, when your first job usually in editing isn't to be some amazing editor. It's actually being a supporter of editing. It's it's logging. It's doing these different things, and that's some of the things that you're all going to be learning. Because again, this job, it, this this the process of this program is to set you up to actually get a job into our industry. So of course, you will learn editing skills and you'll experience editing, but you also do things that are, are way more. Um, how, how can we say make you more valuable? for entry level situation into an agency. So if I, that's that. correct, Noel, please, you know, go for it. Nope, just you, bring you on the spot. Right. Yeah, go ahead, Noel. <laughs> no, um, Kenny covered it. I mean, the there will be editing projects, but when you do get out of our program, you will be pulling clips and you'll be logging tape. Well, not tape, but you'll be logging things. Um, you'll be an assistant editor. You can't get out of the program and go right into um, an editor level position. Sure. But we will prepare you for that while also giving you creative projects to work on that are editing related. Awesome. There are some questions from international students asking about visas, um, you know, and how we support that. Mark, direct them to yeah, please contact our office, the email access.cert um, at otis.edu. Again, our website is otis.edu slash Netflix. Any of those individual sorts of questions, we'd be happy to work with you, get you the information that you would need, um, again, to make the best decision that you can make given your um, situation, wherever you may be coming from. But I think those are best handled on an individual basis. So I would please um, encourage everyone to contact our office and we, you will be contacted on an individual basis to work through any specifics. Awesome. Um, will we accept someone that's already working in the entertainment industry? Absolutely. 
Yeah, I think this, if you're hearing about everything we're saying and we're sharing that this is obviously a creating a opportunity access, um, if you haven't been, had the experience here, right? Um, if you have, if you need more specifics, definitely reach out to us and we can kind of answer your questions. But right, if you are like already a designer and halfway into your career, this might not be for you. Is that is that fair to say? Um, but if you are wanting to learn a new skill, a new trade, um, be you know, change your career track, you absolutely can apply, and um, we welcome it. Safe to say. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. For sure. Um, I think I've covered a lot of the questions. Let's see if there's any more. Feel please, we're I, we could probably take one or two more if there's anything lingering. But if not, Mark, one more time, where can we go for questions? Otis.edu/slash/netflix and our contact information. The best way to get a hold of us is access.cert c e r t at otis.edu, that's our email address for this program. Awesome, and same place to apply, correct? Absolutely, otis.edu slash Netflix. Just like hearing you say it. If we missed any of your questions, again, sorry for that, please feel free to, again, reach out where Mark mentioned, we will get back to you. Um, and if you have any questions along your journey and your application, also, please feel free to reach out. Um, the application is, um, meant to be fun, also meant to share and show your passion and your dedication as well too. Um, so we'll help you here along the way. But you know, it's um, it was really intentional because we were really excited about creating this program and building the right access and space for it. Any final thoughts from my panelists and friends? And I, I have a, a, one of my final thoughts would would, would be to say. Yeah, um, I know right now it's hard to see, but this is the most amazing opportunity. <laughs> it's like, you know, I know it's one of those things like it might be like, oh, what is all this? Like, it might be a lot to take, but honestly, um, you know, our industry really needs it. Our industry needs, um, you know, just it to look more like the world that we live in. And the fact that I think Netflix and Otis have come together to make this opportunity, I think is so amazing. And um, it's it's really one, one, one in a million. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. I would just quickly say, um, please, please apply. If you're not sure if it's for you or not, apply. We'll go from there. But also there's gonna be another in-person info session in March. Um, information come on our website. So you can look out for that as well. But if you're looking to uh, meet people in, uh, in an in-person basis in real life, we will be also having an in-person event in the month of March um, in support of the application window closing on March 31st. So please look out for information for that as well, um, if that's something you're interested in doing. And I will just um, echo what, what Mark said. There will be an in-person info session um, and you can commingle with people and talk with us and um, get some advice about how to apply if you if you're if you've reviewed the application and you need some help or some advice, um, or if you have more questions about the program, but apply. The application is really fun and um, and it's involved. You do have to spend some time on it, but even if you read it now and let everything sort of simmer and you go back to it in a week or two after you've gotten some ideas, um, we have some prompts on the application about how to approach the creative projects. So we're sort of helping you out with, with the planning of that stuff. So apply, it is a great program. Yes, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. And um, like, I think like we, we all have continued to say is the industry needs more of you. And um, we wanna be able to create that access to support you. So we are we are not just leaving you here after this info session. If you have questions, reach out, apply, and you know, hopefully, get to see you and work with you in September. One last time, Mark, where can they go? Otis.edu slash Netflix. I look forward to all of your applications, reviewing them soon. Awesome. Thank you all so much. We'll talk to you soon.